Professor Mark Sims at University of Leicester. You were involved in the Beagle 2 mission uh, back in 2003 um, when, it, when it launched uh, and, and, and reached Mars and we haven't heard from it since you know, Christmas week of that year and now, um, 11, 12 years later, we've, we've got pictures back that seem to show it on the surface. Does, do the pictures vindicate the entire mission and, and how frustrating is it that you seem to have come so close and yet so far? Okay, well the evidence we've got is very very good evidence. We will collect more images, we will confirm that we really do have Beagle on the surface of Mars. Personally I'm 99% certain, but people may differ in the interpretation of those images. It got very, very close to fully working again in science from the surface of Mars. So it's a vindication of all the hard work people put in between 1998 and 2003, both academia and industry building Beagle 2. It, it sort of vindicates the engineering design, though I will admit we probably wouldn't design it exactly the same way if we had to do it again today. Professor Colin Pillinger, who sadly died last year, he was the driving force behind uh, the Beagle 2 mission. How do you think he would have felt upon seeing these pictures if he had still been alive? I think Colin would have had a mix of elation that we got so close. He was a great football fan, so he would say, we hit the crossbar, I'd like to get the goal next time. So he would have been furiously writing grant applications and lobbying people to go back and do a Beagle 3. He would have had a mix of emotions like I have, it would have been elation, it would have been frustration and of course personally I have the emotion of sadness is that Colin having died last year will never know what happened to Beagle 2. The UK Space Agency and I think yourself are involved in the Lunar Mission 1 um, that's uh, crowdfunding uh, for, for a British mission to the moon. Upon seeing these pictures do you think they could galvanise the UK Space Agency to perhaps look at doing a Beagle 3? I think it's an issue of budgets in the end, you know, budgets are limited, we, we, we obviously have problems in the UK in terms of its national debt, etc. Missions cost lots of money. In the days we did Beagle 2 there wasn't crowdfunding. Maybe Beagle 2 could have been crowdfunded if crowdfunding was around back in 2003. There are other countries which are going to Mars, there are other countries which are interested in small landers and hopefully the lessons learnt from Beagle 2 can be applied to small landers. But a lot of the lessons, a lot of the experience from Beagle 2 is being used in the UK to support ESA's ExoMars programme. And what are those lessons that we can learn from Beagle 2? I mean, do, do we have any idea about what could have happened. I mean, we see the pictures there, we see the solar panels um, partly unfurled. What do you think happened? OK, so two, two different questions there. I'll answer the question in terms of what, what could have gone wrong. Numerous things could have gone wrong. Personally, I think it's probably a bad luck scenario. We, Beagle 2 was landed on a day when the atmosphere might be thin. Maybe it landed quite heavily. Depending which way it bounced, it may have landed in the wrong position in terms of putting loads through the structure. The structure could have distorted and that would stop all the solar panels deploying. But that's only one scenario of many. It could be an airbag that was punctured which got hung up around the lander. We really don't have enough resolution to actually tell what, what happened. I mean, the lessons from Beagle 2 occupy a book. We wrote a book in 2004 on all the lessons learnt from Beagle 2. So I can't give you a list, distinct list of lessons, but lots of engineering lessons, lots of logistical lessons, lots of operational lessons, which even NASA were interested in in our internal inquiry. Obviously, they've done more missions than us, but everybody could learn from one another. You know, exploring Mars as an international... Um, participation, everybody wants to go to Mars and everybody should learn from one another. And, and, and finally, briefly, um, if Beagle 2 had successfully opened up and communicated with us, what could it have told us about Mars? Okay, Beagle 2 was going to do world-class science. It would have done things which perhaps only Curiosity has done in the last year. It would have looked for organics on Mars, carbon-based compounds, which you might associate with life. Colin and Ian Wright produced this really neat instrument called the Gas Analysis Package which would detect carbon at very, very low levels. And with that mass spectrometer and the X-ray spectrometer which came from Leicester, you could have age-dated rocks. Now, Curiosity has done that in the last year. And they've got fantastic results. It would have been nice to have done it back in 2003, 2004.